Father, to give him all glory and all honor, because he's the one that's worthy of all glory, all honor, and all praise. To God the Father, to God the Son, to God the Holy Spirit.
it, it, it says the reason for writing the book. Uh, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive uh, the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and a dignity, the words of the wise and their will. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That, 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 that's the rationale for writing the book of Proverbs. And, and, and for example, our subject is uh, addressed elsewhere, even in the Proverbs book. And just to give you a couple of places, like in Proverbs, the 15th chapter and the 30th verse, it says, the light of the eyes rejoices the heart, and a good report makes the bones healthy. In chapter 16, verse 23 and 24, it says, the heart of the wise teaches his mouth, Lord God Almighty, and, and adds learning to his lips, pleasant words, are uh, like a honeycomb. And also one will find that the book of Proverbs also makes some comparisons uh, uh, of several types of people. Most notably, it compares the wise to the unwise. And it also man mentions of three classes of people who desperately need wisdom. Talks about the fool, the simple and the scorner. That's all in that first chapter, verse 22. Uh, it, it says, How long, you simple one, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. You see, when you're not interested in gaining anything, you don't want to read no books, you don't want to study anything, you, you just want to do what you want to do. He tells us that that's the way of a fool. You know, a fool hates instruction and his self-confidence. What he does, uh, uh, it, it, the description of a fool is a person who is dense, sluggish, careless, and self-satisfied. Uh, he talks without thinking and not that fit. The simple are those who believe everything and everybody and lack discretion. They're easily led astray by others because they lack understanding. They cannot see ahead and as a result, they repeatedly walk into trouble. You know people who get into trouble over and over and over again. And they keep doing the same old thing, the same old way, thinking that they're going to get different results, but they keep getting Now, the scorners mock at God's wisdom because it's too high for them. But they will not admit it. You know why? Because they are the know it all. You know, they, 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 they are the people of the world that know everything. We know those kind of people too. Can't tell them nothing. They never profit from rebuking. Also, as a result, they will one day be judged. Now, on the other hand, the wise will listen to instruction. They will obey what they hear and store up what they learn. They seek to win others to the Lord. They flee from sin. They watch their tongue in a distance in their daily work. As our text points out, that we are not to be what? Wise in our own eyes. You see, so, so what we're going to find out about God's wisdom that if you look at um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it tells us that it directs our path. It lets us know, and this is one of my favorite passages of the scripture, the trust in the Lord with all your heart, lead it back to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will what? Direct our path. That's what he'll do. He'll show us 
where to go. The Bible tells us that the Lord makes our path plain. Huh? And, and so, but it's not going to be plain if we are ignoring His word and, and not trusting Him. Huh? Always doing what we think we ought to do and not consulting Him about what to do. But if we flip over to the fourth chapter, he tells us not only will he direct our path, but he will protect our path. In that sixth verse, he says, do not forsake her. We're talking about wisdom and instruction. But he says, uh, she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. You see, when, when you're being protected and preserved, you, you, you're really not falling into some of the traps that mankind tends to fall into because they're ignoring the word of God. But if you drop down to that 18th verse in that, that um, 12th chapter, you'll find out that you'll protect your past. You, 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 you see, in, in the 18th verse, he says, but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. You, you see, as you go along, the Bible tells us in when we were studying um, Psalms, it says, what is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path? And so, so when you're walking in darkness, and you begin to gain the wisdom of the Lord, you're stepping out of the darkness and light coming from the midnight. And all of a sudden, boom, moving into the dawn of the day. And as you move into the dawn of the day, it begins to get brighter and brighter and brighter. Well, that's the way our life will get. It will get brighter and brighter. Things will get more peaceful. And, 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 and Jesus said, when we take our yoke upon us, Take it your partner. He said, but he said, my yoke is easy and my friend is alike. But he said the first thing that we got to do is to take the yoke and learn of him. See, wisdom is a, a, a byproduct of that learning process. And as we learn of him, what we find out that God's wisdom is help to our flesh and strength. So the bones. So back to chapter three. You know, let's just kind of walk through that chapter just a little bit. Time is kind of running out on us today, but we bless God for His word. The, the, the very first thing in chapter three that we are told is to keep the commandments. Says, my son, don't forget my Lord. But let your heart keep my command. Now, now note, let me, let me show you something special about this. When you read through these verses, the odd verses tell us what to do. Keep my command. Let your heart keep my command. Don't forget my law. But then the evil verses tell you how the blessings are going to flow. See, the second verse is, when you keep the commands and, and, and um, don't forget his law, he says, length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. You see? And look at that third verse. He says, don't let mercy and truth forsake you. Find them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Verse 4 then tells you what. So find favor. And how it seems in the sight of God and man. See, you find favor among people and God. And five and six hours of that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge him and what's the blessing? He'll direct your pain. Nine and ten says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of your increase. And ten tells you, your bonds will be filled with plenty and your back will overflow with new wine. You'll have the things that 
to leave and the blessings will flow in your life when you do the things that God tells us. In. 11 and 12, he says, My son, don't despise the chastening of the Lord. Don't detest his correction. Why? For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just as a father, the son in whom he does. There are always blessings that flow as a result of us being obedient to the word. That's why we got to learn to listen to the word. We can't just be hearers of it. Uh, James tells us, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Obey the word. Uh, our willingness to obey is the first step towards knowing God's will. So we got to humble ourselves and submit to the word of God. And if we would treasure the word of God, like David tells us, we hide this word in our heart. We will not sin against him. So much so that every part of our body, every aspect of our being, will be controlled by the word. Joshua puts it this way. There's nothing in life that I can part from your heart, but that I shall meditate on the day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written in. Then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. In other words, it will be help to our flesh and strength to our bones. Hallelujah. We're so appreciative of the fact that my Lord and your Lord, the Savior of the whole world, showed us a dependence on the Word of God was indeed health to his flesh, strength to his bones. But even though they nailed him on the cross, hallelujah, he didn't say it. He didn't stay on the cross. He hung his head and died. He still didn't stay there. He went down into a barred tomb. He still didn't stay there. Three days and three nights. He did that on our behalf. Snatched the keys of death, hell and the grave out of the hands of Satan. And oh, Lord God Almighty gave us a victory that we know and understand that. He took away the sting of death, and, and now he took away the sting of death. He took the victory from the grave. And let us know that if we abide in him, he is us. Whatever we do, we will find that it will be help to our flesh and strength to our bones. Please. Be not.